good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for the wonderful opportunity. I think I got a job of um, um, just convincing you with both sides. Um, I'm going to, it's like a more of a duologue where the GLP one and then the bariatric, uh, I want to discuss both of it and then we'll come up with uh, this thing, what is the best one or how would it work together. So um, basically, I think uh, Dr. Marker has thrown light of how the obesity and what are the challenges and uh, the quite a few evidences of very impressive evidences he's shown. But it is on an alarming rise. There's no question about it. And even uh, uh, it hasn't got uh, any sort of socioeconomic status. Even the poor people are getting into obesity uh, with the food uh, and the, the, uh, the amount of uh, 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 cropping of epidemic of unhealthy food available in the market. So it is a, a disease and it's a an health issue. If, we, if you see the various bodies, um, as in not even the health-related bodies are all uh, uh, recognizing it's the biggest challenge. And we know uh, classification, Dr. Makar has gone uh, in a brief way, but for Asians, I think we need to be much more vigilant than what it is. And uh, how uh, uh, we have to overcome this epidemic uh, is by uh, almost, it's like not an epidemic, it's a pandemic. Um, we have to uh, see uh, the challenges, what happens with obesity, as Dr. Makkar again uh, uh, was mentioning about the complications and it's going on each day. But um, so we need to address that and then the pharmacotherapies and other lifestyle management, AI, there are quite a lot of uh, things that is in the pipeline. So we see uh, as uh, uh, this thing and almost like a tip of the iceberg. So when the water comes down, then you see the whole of the pillar. So um, uh, it, it, the status wise that uh, uh, people with obesity is in a rise in a big way. And this is all not an accurate measure. Uh, but when the government scheme comes in and when we can able to pick up a lot of people through data um, and all the apps come in in an active way, then we could be able to say uh, accurately what um, uh, the, the amount of obesity is. So what are the treatments available? This is all the behavioral intervention. There are a lot of uh, tech companies are acting on that. It's just to change the behavior. A lot of them uh, hasn't got an AI incorporated, but some of them has got AI incorporated. And then the pharmacotherapy wise, quite a lot of uh, uh, pharmacotherapies available and very, very exciting area. There are a lot of new uh, drugs are coming into pipeline, which I will be discussing very briefly. And uh, how about the bariatric? It is in the uh, scene for a very long time. I come from a place called Coimbatore where we got a, a bariatric center of excellence, gym hospital where it is uh, being done in a big way. So I look after quite a lot of bariatric patients as well. So um, what is the perception? If you uh, have a patient in your clinic, for example, and if you uh, ask, uh, tell them that you're obese, um, um, and, then, uh, um, and, and then to discuss about it, you cannot convince them that they're obese in the first place. Once that is done, and uh, attitude towards medication is a no, um, um, uh, no for the patient. So if you see the perception and attitude towards the medication, weight loss medication, what will they say is they will eat all the pani buris and other things from quite a lot of nasty places outside uh, with the even the fluid uh, uh, what they give in uh, whether the hygiene they won't bother about all that but when it comes to medication they will ask you the first question i'm very concerned about the safety and the side effect and what is not i i think that's what you i'm, I'm sure you will all face up in a day to day in a big way so and what are the reception of the hcps the general practitioner or md or uh, the guys who practices from gynecology side or any other specialty, what is that? I think the most physicians would prefer to motivate the patient in the first, oh, go and do the Ryan lifestyle and then come back. So that's what we do as well. But I think the intensity or what Dr. Makkar was mentioning about the inertia, and that is there in a big way. So we need to motivate the patients and the attitude is really uh, uh, not different for the surgery as well. N nearly two third of the patients would rather lose weight through diet and exercise. We don't disagree. We are all clinicians. We practice and we don't disagree with the, whatever we see as the perception. This is uh, uh, done by Dr. Unikrishnan, one of the endocrinologists. So uh, you can see the medical weight management methods uh, discussed and then uh, almost 10 of them, about 10% of them is about the bariatric surgery. So if you look at the methods of weight recommended, 
uh, by the healthcare professional. It's mainly the diet and the healthy eating uh, exercise. And we don't ideally, sometimes we do have a dietitian with us. Sometimes most of the clinics that doesn't have a dietitian. So we tend to uh, tell the common things and we need to hand over the paper to the uh, patient. And sometimes it is not ideal scenario because uh, the, we are living in the world of precision medicine. So precision nutrition is already there. We can't just go blindly and say low carbs and high protein. Uh, even that is not acceptable. And sometimes a doctor coming up with saying all that is not at all acceptable um, in the ideal scenario because we got a lot of responsibility in changing the drugs, looking at the side effects and looking at the complication, identifying it early and counseling the patient. So many things are there. And then if you want to counsel for the drug, that's the last thing you want. And then the tracking, as I mentioned, with a lot of IT companies and the medical management and the quality of life uh, scenario. So average physician recommend weight loss surgery only through 8%. Even I think this data is just 8% is a bit too high. But the number of bariatric surgery is increasing. Uh, but um, I, I think after this new drugs coming in, the levels are coming down. But the benefits of uh, bariatric surgery, we almost to a 15, 20 years now, and there is no question that there is improvement in the technique of surgery and the way they've done, and then the learning from the last uh, decade or so, and the control, the banding, and the vertical gastroplasty and gastric bypass, which is the drastic one, uh, which can lead to a, a significant weight loss. Uh, but I think the uh, various uh, intervention in the bariatric one with uh, lifestyle, a very low carb uh, low calorie diet, and then in, uh, intensive behavioral therapy, and then the pharmacotherapy and gastric sleeve and the gastric bypass. So bypass, as I mentioned, has got the biggest, uh, uh, this thing. So, and then the non-surgical approach to weight loss, uh, the balloons are inserted, a lot of celebrities are doing it, and that has got its own challenge, but it is working for quite a lot of people. And uh, the celebrities, they just go and then come back slim. A uh, lot of them have got uh, this thing and the gastric balloon, but the, there are a lot of challenges with the bariatric procedure as a whole. Uh, weight regain is the biggest challenge. And then uh, associated with perioperative and short-term complication, the 30-day mortality of uh, any surgery, for example, pneumonia or urinary tract infection and post-operative sepsis, that can happen. I mean, you must have seen recent thing in Chennai where one of the hospitals have uh, done a bariatric and then they're really in trouble now. <coughs> the risk factor complication and the type of surgery, if you go for a bypass and other things, the risk is a bit higher. And then the functionally dependent patient already and the mental thing, if you don't train them and if you don't do a pre-operative workup and the counseling and the uh, thing, uh, it won't work for a lot of people because they feel like what they are before. Uh, it is like having an amputated limb where they will feel that phantom thing. So they will have that kind of whole feeling and if you don't counsel and then make them to receive uh, it is like having uh, receiving a baby of a, a pregnant lady so it is a mental thing they have to prepare to get the post-operative thing if you don't do it they'll get into real trouble even psychologically so and then the long-term complication uh, no brainer with the vitamin and mineral deficiencies and food intolerance and regurgitation you might have seen quite a few patients um, leave alone the weight regain, but these are all very, very difficult to manage. Uh, I've seen a 17 year or 20 year old girl who's had done the surgery and then come in with repeated nutrition deficiency, and it is very, very difficult to manage. And also about the suicide risk, as I mentioned, and they go into the alcohol because they get, well, as I mentioned, if you don't get the counseling right pre-operatively, and, and that will be a huge challenge in managing post-op. So complications of bariatric surgery, individually gastric bypass sleeve and adjustable band, uh, biliopancreatic diversion has got all the, this thing has got mortality as well. Um, but uh, the biggest challenges I mentioned about the immediate effect and all the late effect. So, um, uh, the, but it, it is a efficacious method uh, when you do the surgery, uh, the, uh, compared to the control, uh, the, the surgery has got its own benefit, but uh, the mortality and other things, uh, quite a lot of um, other complications can occur. Again, these are all the, uh, regarding the gastric band, it's got its uh, own challenges. I won't go into the details, but uh, row in one um, bypass surgery 
and the bypass surgery complications individually has got a problem. Um, I mentioned about the nutritional deficiency, and then this is the very important thing. The psychiatric aspects is a uh, real uh, 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 challenge. We need to consider that. Now, coming to, so I mentioned about the benefits of bariatric and also the complications and how the patients perceive and everything. Now, coming to the anti-obesity medications, these are the medication, Orlistat is available, naltroxone, fentiramine, liraglutide, uh, fentiramine and topiramate is not available, and naltroxone, bupropion is not available, semaglutide is approved, and then um, um, uh, the um, uh, uh, other things, uh, Tirsapatide is also approved. So uh, these are all exciting molecules that is going to be coming in uh, India. So um, drug mode of action, I won't go to the details, but uh, the, it all works really well in appetite reduction. And proposed mechanism, it acts in the multiple ways, but the GLP-1 is the common one that has got a long-term uh, benefit and also integral part of obesity management. And this is the semaglutide. Uh, the human GLP analog, we got uh, oral semaglutide already available here. And if you go to the STEP program, which is the intensive program um, that is done, uh, and it's proved in patients with OA and pre-diabetes and quite a lot of things, it has got almost 20% weight loss. And if you go into the robust, uh, uh, almost uh, uh, with the diverse population as well, even the Asia population, uh, it has got a huge amount of benefit. So that's why I think these drugs are um, uh, it's real in demand throughout the world, uh, but celebrities started using it, and then it is uh, selling like anything in black market, um, even in India. They say somewhere around 120 crores or something in the black market, that's what is happening uh, as we speak. Um, and it's got proven benefit almost 15 to 17%, and then the long-term benefit is there as well, and the evidence is available. And if you look at the uh, benefits beyond the uh, weight, uh, there are a lot of other things, buy one, get four free sort of thing, cholesterol, BP, and quite a lot of other benefits. Uh, uh, as Mac Dr. Maka was mentioning, multiple complications like sleep apnea and other things improve, and quality of life and that improves the overall psychological well-being. This is the drug, uh, Monjero, it's going to be uh, uh, approved and, well, it's approved already, but it's going to be in the market, but it's because of the availability, it's not there in India because of the production challenges. Um, and it's a novel one, and Sarmond is the uh, study which proved much more uh, robust data for them. And Cagrisima is one of the novo product, and it's got a combination of semaglutide with cangulitide, and uh, it has got um, a benefit of not only the weight reduction, but uh, I think the metabolic uh, changes that happens has got a, uh, in turn, the overall improvement of the patient. So it is a combination product, and it's got not only the weight loss, almost 15 to 20%, and then the, um, it is beneficial in type 2 diabetics as well. And how about the oral semaglutide, which is the ribulses available here, and it's got the data as well. Uh, but the near uh, future, the drugs are going to be, amount of drugs is going to be huge, uh, even with the triple thing, GLP, GIP, um, uh, with the, uh, this thing, Ritra to tight, uh, 48 week study, and uh, that is got, um, um, going to be in the market. So these drugs are very, very exciting future prospects in obesity, and how, um, uh, well, we can integrate these two uh, if it is the patients that uh, oral therapy and preoperatively you can, I've seen in the centers, as I've said, uh, the, I work in one of the centers where they do use as a pre-op to reduction of the weight and then do the bariatric procedure and then even the post-op um, where they use the GLP-1s as an adjuvant along with the bariatric procedure if it's a super obese patient. So the evidence is there for liraglutide and uh, I think there are a lot of audit and clinical audit, which is the data of their own practices available, which is not that much published, but it is available. It is an effective adjuvant for weight loss with, along with the surgery, and it further weight loss happens uh, after the bariatric procedure. So uh, my question is almost two minutes there. So my question is, I mentioned about uh, the bariatric, the side effects and the advantages of that. And then the, uh, about the GLP ones, and then the exciting the GLP ones, which is going to be in the market soon, their advantages, and what are the multiple benefits of them, whether it, uh, the oral therapies are real threat to the surgery, 
possibly not i think we can use it together as an adjuvant if it is needed and uh, post operative medical therapy it really reduces the uh, weight loss and pros and cons of weight loss surgery we have discussed that uh, significantly but the quality of life uh, reduction of coronary artery disease i got uh, only one more minute so and then anti obesity drug the advantages are there it is non invasive and as i mentioned some drugs are oral drugs as well and uh, and then the weekly once injections are going to be available so it is going to be exciting uh, but the, there are disadvantages the cost is the major thing in india but um, but having said that i think <laughs> the black market doesn't seem to be like people are bothered about that but i think that's we are talking about a cream rich population when we go into the uh, people below that poverty uh, or the affordable line then the, it's going to be uh, uh, some time before these molecules can get into that uh, socio economic status so just to summarize obesity is a big challenge and uh, the there are advantages for uh, the obesity surgery and it has got an uh, area where we can definitely use it um, but the overall new drugs and the glp ones are really exciting um, but it is like a consumable so you going to be it's going to be long term uh, this thing the cost is going to be there but uh, we can use together in some group of patients but now for the time being the injectables and orals definitely uh, takes an advantage compared to surgery that is my view but uh, uh, it's uh, definitely uh, uh, up to the individual practice thank you very much for the wonderful opportunity yeah